word of God. I want to go straight into the word of God. And on your screen, you see that I have, um, I've been doing, I started this series for some time now. This is a third part of half questions about Black Islam. I don't want to repeat myself. I'll be doing a whole lot of, uh, uh, I'll be quoting others today. Then I'll bring in the scriptures. The reason I have, uh, I wanted to do this, this is part of my apologetic uh, uh, studies at a, uh, at a graduate level that I was thinking about bringing some studies on this, but then I realized that um, since we are in a month of Black celebration, uh, February happened to be the Black month, uh, I have a detailed aspect on that. Go watch the video. And so uh, uh, I run into my brothers, my Black brothers in America who, uh, you know, uh, belong to Nation of Islam. And uh, we, we want to look into that. I, I sympathize and have an empathy uh, for what has transpired 400 years ago, you know, but then uh, is that an excuse not to follow the true uh, teaching of scripture? No, uh, but uh, so today in this part three of tough questions about black Islam, I am going to consider a subtitle. I don't have it on the screen, a subtitle. What makes religion black? Uh, if you go watch my, if you, when you watch my previous videos on uh, this subject matter, matter, you will realize that I, I talk about a lot of folks listening to me now. When you, you you hear dogma, dogmatism, what does that mean exactly? This is real dogma. You know, black. Uh, Religion is a real dogma. I think I did some, uh, I explained that in my previous video, so I'm not going to repeat myself here. Uh, so this is a subtitle. What makes religion black? I don't have it on the screen, but after the service, maybe I'll have the subtitle when I'm posting the video, uploading the video. What makes religion black? You know, to understand the social dynamic of black religion in a sense, oh, in this sense, I'm specifically referring to black Islam, okay? The Islam for, to be specific. We must consider, we must consider very important role Christianity played in the struggle of black people in America. We must always consider that. Yes, there has been a struggle. We cannot deny that. Those are historical facts. We can never deny that. We can run away from it. But bear with me. We should not only recognize but acknowledge those struggles in light of slavery years. Historically, the greatest tragedy of early American Christendom was the failure of some white preachers to denounce slavery and practices of segregation. That is also a fact. It is true. Most of you know this already. And again, why am I touching on this? I want to bring these facts out, okay? So we know that, okay, no one is telling you that, oh, why are you not a Christian? Maybe some of you are uh, part of this uh, black Islam don't even know, you know, why you are part of it, probably. But until, you know, until the 1960s, there was undeniable facts about, about segregation. Uh, even in today's, in the 21st century, uh, we were still trying to sneak in segregation because where you try to teach other colored kids about something, to downplay or maybe um, condescendingly, you know, look down upon another color, then you are bringing directly, bringing in segregation, you know? Anyway, so like I was saying, unfortunately, Americans, or unfortunately, America in the recent past has placed a high level of 
racial distinction where life was separated into two domains, black and white fountains, black and white schools, black and white movie houses, black and white jobs, black and white religions. Those are also facts, right? So Robert White put it this way, black religion can be defined as the spiritual pattern and practices of black people in America that have developed over, over the course of 400 years. He continued that black religion is also a continuity of the spiritual practices of African people. So black Islam, according to Robert White, can be defined as social philosophy of Islam articulated through the African-American experience. Bear with me. Is it making sense sound to you? Okay, because, because the status of Negro people in America has improved over time, there is a need for periodic self-identification. While European immigrants, for, 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 for an example, tend to express dual identity that encompasses United States citizenship as well as their point of origin, Black people have embraced their US citizenship reluctantly and often accepted the identity placed on them by the American social order, which is through a run into brothers who reluctantly, again, I sympathize with you. I have an empathy, empathy for you for that. But that is not the reason you should deny Christ. That should not be the reason for you to deny. Let me, let me, I'm quoting this from uh, uh, some sources. These are sources that you can find anywhere else. Now, I was talking about periodic self-identification, where Europeans, you know, with their dual citizenship, they have a point of reference. You know, me, originally from Africa, I can identify with that too. You know, I can have a point of reference. My grandfather, great, 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 great grandfather, you know. So again, I, but with Black Americans, it is like, you have to accept that identity reluctantly. So I, I know I, I'm, you agree with me that reluctantly because it's been, it's been placed on you by a uh, social order. Okay, the term Negro, color, and black are not synonyms, but do signify key features of African existence at various points in the evolving American social order, according to Robert White. And that is true because, you know, when you are filling application, whether it is online or on a hard copy, when you get to ethnicity, you know, you have it down there, you know, you, you know, you know, African, Black American, European, whatever, what have you. See what I'm saying? So that's exactly what. Robert White is saying it. Robert White continue with this statement. Without, without the experiences that Black people have suffered in America, which made racial distinction a cornerstone of existence, there would be no need to designate religions in terms of Black or white. It should also be noted that most Black churches most black churches were founded after Negroes were either denied or refused access to white churches. These are all factual. These are all things that unfortunately uh, the black American has to deal with. We are not talking about the 21st century. I am referring, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing these facts to your notice to point to you the deficiency in Black Islam or Nation of Islam. All these uh, convenient excuses to justify 
why you should check uh, your religion at the door if you are a Christian. Say, hey, you cannot preach or teach about Jesus because Jesus is a white man religion. Again, that is a mere uh, convenience excuse to justify your denial of following Christ. You know, we all have uh, convenient excuses. My daughter had taken advantage of one of that this couple of days. And uh, <clears throat> I said, you know what? We have given her that she had the issue, the issue right? She, she justified that, but we, we, make, we created a room or we make room for her to use it as a convenient excuse. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So these are all convenient excuses. That is my opinion. That is me. I'm not reading this from anywhere, but that is that is what I thought. I think about some of those things. You know, some things in life could be legit and could also uh, uh, give you an opportunity uh, uh, to justify your decision. But then, when you when you analyze and 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 analyze critically and think about it critically, say no. It looks like I did have legitimate reason, but that does not deem the justification of my action or reaction. You know, if sometimes we come to, uh, we, we, we look deep down and, and, you know, and find out some of those. And so this is what is happening. So I'm bringing this to our attention to point to us that, yes, this black Islam, you know, uh, which subtitle is what make a religion black and specifically referring to black Islam, all right? Now, I have said earlier that the Negroes were denied or the African churches were found after Negroes were denied access or refused access to the white churches. That is why uh, most blacks, you know, uh, began to found their own churches so they can have a home. Now, Theology tends to express thoughts about God in human terms, and Black theology in particular is always related to historical events and the cultural experiences of the Black people. Uh, let me pause here. You know, I was listening to one particular doctor last time on, on, on the radio, and he was speaking about, I want to make some points because some of you say, oh, but Pastor, what you're supposed to be teaching, teaching scriptures, but I'm going to bring some point. I want to pause it. I'll come back to where I left off. Say, so why, why, why are you giving us all these things? And I was listening to him, and he was talking about Martin Luther, giving history, you know, of everything that he did. And, and then if, if you are not paying attention or if you don't want to learn, you see, wow, well, you turn off the radio, but you, when you listen, before he brings the scriptures, you say, oh, it makes sense why he did brought, I mean, he did bring out those historical facts before he bring in the scripture. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. Okay. So theology tends to express thoughts about God in human terms and black theology in particular is always related to historical events and the cultural experiences of black people. Let me quote uh, 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 the words of James Cone, author of the book of God of the Oppressed. I want to quote his exact words. White theologians built logical systems. Black folks told tales. You know that, right? Exactly. White debated the validity of infant baptism or the issue of predestination and free will. Blacks recited biblical stories about God leading the Israelites from Egyptian bondage, Joshua and the battle of Jericho, and the Hebrew children in the fury of fiery furnace. White theologians argued about the general status of religious assertions in view of the development of science generally and Darwin's origin of species in particular. Blacks were more concerned about their status in American society and its relation to the biblical claim that Jesus 
came to us to set the captives free. White thought the Christian view of salvation, salvation was largely spiritual and sometimes, and sometimes, and sometimes rational, but usually separated from the concrete struggle of freedom in this world. Blacks or black thought was largely eschatological and never abstract, but usually related to Black's struggle against earthly oppression. End of quote. Here, what is, what is uh, uh, this man saying here is, you know, the whites tend to look at uh, the Bible from certain viewpoint. And the Black struggle, we can relate that to the Israelites. This is why most of the Jews deny Christ because they were under severe hardship of these Romans. And they were expecting the Messiah to come bring physical deliverance, you know, and they heard that the Christ was born. They can, they can see everything that he did. Everything, you know, they, they, they knew that this was an ordinary individual, yet they still deny him. They refused to accept him that he was a, the Messiah because they could not fathom that he was a sovereign or, or, or what a sovereign servant who is to give his life as a ransom to humanity's redemption. They could not, you know, really put two and two together. Here, the blacks similar, you know, they have this slavery struggling. And here comes this why it's talking about, okay, salvation is, you know, it's, so the blacks say, no, 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 this is, we, we look at this uh, eschatological, meaning the end time. We, we were looking for liberation. So that is all this man is saying here. Make sense? <clears throat> so this man is saying here. And again, let me say, why is thought? <laughs> the Christian's view of salvation was largely spiritual and sometimes rational, which is true but usually separated from the concrete struggle of freedom in this world, which is true. Think about it from your, as a Christian, we all still go through life. Every hardship we can think about, but we're supposed to be Christians, right? We're supposed to be redeemed, which we are. So spiritually, we, we've been, we are born again. Let, let, let me pause here again before I, I give you uh, so, uh, another quote that I have down here. Um, you know, the desire we have, if you are a Christian, you have a new desire. You have a, you, you have a, a new outlook in life. You have a new world view. Your desires are no longer uh, catered toward the things that you were redeemed from. You have a new desire. That is what makes you new man because you were now born again. Let me, let me illustration. Say you used to go to the club and you club all night. Doesn't matter what day it is. You just love the club. You go, you, you drink, you smoke, you find any lady you can lay eyes on, and that's that is your lifestyle. And then one day, the gospel was preached to you, and God invited you, and you accepted His invitation. When you were clubbing, drinking, smoking, your heart—you were at enmity with God. You were at loggerhead with God. You were an enemy of God. Therefore, anything righteous, anything holy, anything sanctified is foreign to you. But now that you have accepted Christ and you receive a new heart, everything about you from the inside out has now been transformed. Now you have a new desire. You've been delivered from something 
a, 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 a minister said this better than I can say it. You know, when you are in, without Christ, when we are in the world, you are alive to sin. You are alive to the things of this world. You are alive to anything outside of holiness. But when you become born again, you are now alive to righteousness. You become, that's what the Bible says, you are a slave, doulos, according to, you know, the translation. Doulos, the Greek word, a slave to righteousness. What does a slave does? A slave obeys his master. A slave have no choice. But just that in Christianity, it's, it's the best choice, best slavery you can become. A slavery to, a slave to righteousness? Who can beat that? <laughs> you know, so here, why am I bringing this up? Because when you are redeemed, you have a new appetite. You have a new desire. Everything that you desire now is toward holiness, righteousness, because you are sanctified. And whenever you, you find yourself in anything that is contrary to holiness, quickly you leave because that is no longer your desire. Because you, you are, that's what Paul, this is what Paul says, if you are in Christ, you have become new. All things has become new. Just check it. Because everything about you, a new desire, anything that is, that contradicts that new desire, you say, no, 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 you know, it's not, that is also makes you realize that truly you are born again. So I just want to, because so here the struggle as the why teach that, okay, salvation is largely spiritual, you know, at least at this moment, you know, and, and, and sometimes rational. Um, the black man here, think looking at his struggle as a slave, said, hold it. No, <laughs> I, I, I want physical redemption, okay? I want, I, want, I, I want myself out of this situation. I hope I'm making sense. Does that make sense? So the, the blacks, the blacks, black thought was largely es eschatological and never abstract, but usually related to, to blacks struggle against earthly oppression. I don't want to confuse you today to, to bring to your attention about the, the, the kind of uh, eschatological things I would talk about. But according to, let me give you another quote. According to According to general editors of Who Made God? Late uh, Dr. Ravi Zacharias and distinguished theologian and apologist, Norman Geisler. There is a significant proof of evidence of considerable number of slaves who arrived on the shores of America as Muslims. Yes. As Muslims. The book cited an example of missionaries from South Carolina, Georgia, and Louisiana spoke of slaves praying to Allah and abstaining from eating pork. But slaves soon adopted the religion of their masters and tailored its basic tenets to reflect their experience. Americans are reverting back. Oh, let me say many African Americans. Oh, no, no. Let, let me go back here. Bear with me. <clears throat> I said, uh, I was saying that the book that I'm referring to, uh, uh, Who Made God? The general authors were late Ravi Zacharias and distinguished uh, theologian Norman Geisler. They cited this book. And the book cited an example of missionaries from South Carolina, Georgia, and Louisiana spoke of slaves praying to Allah and abstaining from eating pork. But slaves soon adapted the religion of their masters and tailored its basic tenets to reflect in their experience. Now, this is the point I want to bring out. Now, more than 400 years of Christianity many African Americans are reverting back to the religions of their forefathers. 
espoused before coming to the shore of America. So now you see where the black Islam come in. Now, if you did not hear me, most, mo most black blacks that came here, came to the shore of America as slaves, they were formerly Muslims. They only became Christians because their slave masters were Christians. So after 400 years, they begin now begin to revert back to their religion of origin. And again, this that why am I teaching this? This still does not make it. We're talking about eternity. Eternity is a long time. <laughs> it's a limited time. So we're talking about eternity. This could be convenient excuse, convenient, you know, uh, uh, excuse to revert back to false religion. Because what is what is uh, black Islam? It's pure false religion. We're going to look at the scriptures that I was quoting. I'm going to go back to the book of Galatians. I have, we're going to study, stay in that book until I finish teaching this particular uh, black Islam. So again, they are reverting back to the religion of their forefathers, the religion they espoused, which is what Muslim. But then now they have these, what I call dogma, dogmatism. It, a, a dogmatic aspect of religion, it encompasses entire, entire sect. So dogma is not just like, okay, I say I'm faith, and then I say it's, it's built a, a theme on that, make it dogmatic. No, a dogma, uh, the, the major, major aspect of dogmatism is where a doctrine and complete religion is built around that. That is what we see here in Black Islam. So, making sense? Now, late Dr. Fred Price of Crenshaw Christian Center in Los Angeles made the following observations in one of his interviews. Quote, the problem with, the problem with, the problem uh, with, the church is not a Bible. It is those who have interpreted it, or more accurately, misinterpreted it. Some people are saying that, I'm quoting verbatim from what he says during one of his interviews. Some people are some people are saying that because people took the Bible, manipulated its message, and used it as a reason to justify the enslavement of and mistreating of a race of people for no other reason than the color of their skin, we ought to dump the Bible. But the Bible has not been the problem. It has been, it has been the so-called perverse of the biblical teaching. So here, the late Dr. Uh, Fred Price, a black pastor, when I first came to America, I, I spent almost nine months in his church in Los Angeles. He wrote a book called How Faith Works. I give that book to somebody and I, I learned a lot about faith. That time I was new Christian. Anyway, that is what he's saying. So black Islams have the same issue. Go watch my previous video, my video from last Sunday. The black Islam said because Christianity is a white male religion. And again, I sympathize with you and I empathy. I have that empathy for you. Yes, some folks use Christianity, you know, to justify their own wrongdoings. That is what uh, Dr. Uh, the late Dr. Fred Price is saying here. Let me read again what he said. He says, some people are saying that because people took the Bible, manipulated its message, and used it as a reason to justify the enslavement and mistreating of a race of people for no other reason than the color of their skin, we ought to dump the Bible. And again, that is it's as clear as daylight. 
I said, no, for the fact that this, some folks use the Bible for their own wrongdoing and use the Bible as, as a source and a means of justification does not mean that there's nothing good or the Bible is wrong. So who is wrong? Nation of Islam is wrong. Who is wrong? Black Islam is wrong. Next, we're going to bring in, uh, I'll be teaching on how it was founded. We're going to bring, I'll bring the founders. You can still, you have the information out there. It's, it's, you go to the information highway, you find it before I bring it to you uh, next Sunday. So what he's saying here is, look, this has nothing to do with the Bible. The formation or the founding of Black Islam is a choice somebody made out there in, in light of what was going on. Say, hey, this white man, they enslaved us. They, they, they brought us from Africa. Uh, we don't know our ancestors. Uh, and, and therefore, the religion they're talking about we are not going to follow that religion. That is not, that is not an excuse to lose out on eternity. Jesus is very clear. Sometimes we gloss over some of these passages. In John chapter 14, verse 6, let me read that passage. Jesus made emphatic declaration. John 14, 6. I have it in memory, but I want to read it. John 14, 6. Jesus made an emphatic declaration. And I always ask folks that among all religious leaders, which of these religious leaders have such audacity to be so audacious to make such a statement? And anyone that makes such a statement, the, the person is either uh, over, over himself or he's a lunatic or he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> but you and I know that Jesus is none of those. <laughs> John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I want you to check your religious archives. Check your religious literatures and see who religious leader that ever existed with such emphatic declaration that a God you are worshiping. Let me point it to you clear. Nation of Islam or Black Islam, Jesus is saying that the religion you are following, the God you are seeking for in Black Islam, unless you seek him through Jesus Christ, you can find him. That's what Jesus is saying. So for the father, somebody use the Bible, misinterpret the Bible, you know, with all to justify his wrongdoings, does not make the Bible wrong. I use some of my, I use my own analogy, sometimes uh, my own illustration from um, marriage perspective. Marriage as an institution is great, wonderful, and perfect because God established that. But today, do we see divorce in and out? Some Because even I heard uh, that there's a drive-by or drive-through wedding. I heard it, <laughs> that it happens in where? Las Vegas. They can just be in a car, you drive by, the minister blesses you, give you, I think, marriage certificate, and off you go. <laughs> and in three days, in one week, two months, there is divorce. For the father, there is marrying and divorcing. Does not make the marriage as an institution bad in itself. For the father, folks are abusing or using their own um, ambitions, using their own, you know, self-centered ideologies to taint marriage as an institution, does not make marriage as an institution bad in itself. Folks are always going to marry and divorce. 
but the marriage as an institution as God has established stands. Because even that is a form of the body of Christ. The, the Bible says, Christ, we are the bride. The body of Christ is the bride. In church, uh, uh, Christ is the bridegroom. So anything we see in the Bible is, is, is modeled after what God is doing. And again, when we, we the consummation of all things, where we have, you know, we have a prophetic eschatology. I was sharing with this, my son, yesterday. And we have apocalyptic eschatology. A prophetic eschatology is where the consummation of all things has been prophesied will come to fulfillment. Then apocalyptic eschatology is where consummation of all things, those who deny God in the person of Jesus Christ will be judged accordingly. And on that day, hear me well, hear me, listen carefully. God, if God did not treat sin, then he's not a just God. That day, God justice will reign. And the free will, the ability to choose, the capacity to say yes or no, right or wrong, he's given that against uh, knowing very well that giving us the ability to choose, we're going to rebel, disobey, turn our back. He did it anyway. So on that day, I call, uh, uh, when a prophetic, I'll say, yeah, prophetic, prophetic um, eschatology or apocalyptic, apocalyptic eschatology happens, those who deny Christ will be judged righteously, justly, and equitably, because of you love, love, love the word equitable, will be judged equitably according to the choice they have made right here. So here, Jesus says, Jesus saying that the God you are looking for, whether you are seeking him through black Islam or nation of Islam, or you are seeking him through Buddhism, or any other form, Confucianism, you know, where you think maybe um, you have to attain some level of en uh, enlightenment where the consciousness, you get lost in yourself in a process. You redefine yourself within yourself. Then you are enlightened. That is nothing but subjective. Subjectivism, think about it. When you are drowning, either in a pool or in a lake, you don't look within yourself for a rescue. You look outside. You look for someone from outside for your rescue. And so Jesus is saying here that whether it is Black Islam, whether it is nation of Islam, whether it is Islam in general, whether it is Buddhism, whether it is Hinduism, whether it is Scientology, whether it is Baha, whatever religion is out there, Jesus is clear that unless you find the God that you are seeking through him, you cannot find him. So if you are a, a member of Black Islam, yes, these are all legitimate reasons they make legit, it makes sense that, okay, uh, those considerable number of the slaves that arrived at the shores of America, most of them were Muslims, but they had finally become Christians because of their masters, slave masters. And now that you are here after 400 years, most of you now reverting back to the religion of your forefathers, which is Islam, the Bible says any other way is wrong. Now, let me read something to you that I, a passage that I have read, uh, I used in the beginning of my studies coming from Galatians, Galatians chapter one. Um, but be before I read Galatians chapter one, or oh, I'll come back here, there's something I want to 
pick up on, but I'll come to Mark chapter 3, verse 29. Um, son, mark that down for you. Mark 3, 29. I'll come back here later. Yeah, but let, I, I want us to go, go to Galatians. Galatians, uh, I, that's a passage I have been using. I'm going to use this passage all throughout the studies, this studies. Let's go to Galatians chapter 1. And I am not going to read the entire uh, verse, like chapter, like I did last time. Uh, but I'm going to read from verse, um, I'll read from verse 6. It says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in a grace of Christ to a different gospel. Uh, this is to the church in Galatia but it is applicable to all of us today. It is applicable to my brother, my brothers in the black Islam religion. If you have converted your life to Christ, though you did that to reflect your experience, you know, as a result of uh, the way you got here in America. So it, it was, it was, Impose or impose upon you by your slave master, it is still the right religion. And the Bible says, I marvel, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ it's nothing but perversion. Verse 8. Verse 8 says, <clears throat> but even if we, this one we're gonna I'll be dealing with this passage until I finish. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. In in the uh King James Version is it let him be anathema, curse. Verse 9 says, continue the same thing. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Verse 8, if any angel... You remember, I believe Joseph, uh, Joseph Smith from, I think, um, Draw Witness and the Quran, these guys all claim that they receive their literatures from an angel. Yes, there are deceiving angels out there. So I don't, I, <clears throat> I am not in doubt that they received this book from some angel, but it is not from God. <laughs> it is not from God. They may receive it from some angel, but it's deceptive angel. Maybe next week, I'll, I, I did some teaching on that, but next week I'll bring that to your attention again of how uh, God want to send some. Uh, I don't want to just bring confusion. I'll bring it uh, next time. But I, 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 if it is from, if Muhammad says he received the Quran from an angel, I don't doubt that. But it is not from God. It's from demon. <laughs> All right? Because Jesus cannot be wrong. In John 14, John 14, uh, 6, Jesus cannot be wrong. Jesus cannot be wrong. He said, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And here Paul was saying in Galatians, read this letter to the, Gal to, 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 to the church of Galatia. said, look, number one, I marvel that you are turning away so soon. <laughs> so you are you, you, the, the gospel you are being being preached to is perverse. It's, it's not a real gospel. It's, it's gospel of perversion has been perverted. It's been diluted. I also ask. I want to pause you a little bit. I asked somebody the other day. Those of you who we all deal with technology today. Your phone, any of your gadget, laptop, you know, an iPad, what what have you. If you are downloading a software. And you, you get to 99% of the software and you stop the downloading. What happens? Yeah, it's you lost that file. It's gone. 
if you apply that to religion, some folks says, oh, religion, um, all truth, all religion lead to God. There is truth. No, no, no. Even if it is 99.9%, .9%, it's still false. <laughs> I, I use that uh, download, uh, software downloading as an, as an analogy. So Paul says, even if any angel, even if we, even as I speak to you now, that's Paul is saying, as I'm speaking to you now, if me or any angel come to you with any other gospel, let that angel be accursed. So you are listening to me, black member of Islam. No, your religion is false. Yes, it is false. Now, let me go back to uh, what scripture did I ask you to hold for me? Mark chapter what? Mark 3.29. Mark 3.29. Uh, let me read something to you. Mark 3.29. Uh, okay, Mark, let me let me pull this up fast. I think oh, I pull up something. Bear with me, okay? I, I just want to I, I, I want to read the scriptures to you now because I gave you some historical facts and I want to just um conclude my teaching with um uh with the Bible with scriptures. Okay, Mark 3 29 says, let me start from verse. Uh let me start from verse 8. Verse 28, as surely I say to you, all sins will be forgiven. All sins will be forgiven the sons of men. And whatever blasphemes or whatever blasphemies they may author, but he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. Why did I bring that passage up? The blasphemy, you know, the sin of the blasphemy is when you look through the Old Testament, is death. This is why those who killed Jesus, who crucified Jesus, although they think they, they thought they were doing it, they didn't know that it was a prophecy fulfilled, fulfilled anyway. It was on the basis of blasphemy because Jesus said he is God and said, oh, he blasphemed. And Penalty of blasphemy is capital punishment, right? Death. Here, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is denial of Christ. The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is to reject the cross of Calvary. The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is to reject the Christ event and the perusia, the, his, his, his death, you know, uh, uh, burial, uh, resurrection, and ascension. That is the ultimate blasphemy. This is why Jesus says, all sins, all blasphemies will be forgiven, except for the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, meaning you trample under the cross. Say, forget it. I am not believing you. I, this is a warning to a member of a black Islam. I believe that the Holy Spirit wanted to hear this, reconsider your teachings, Reconsider your belief. Reconsider your religion. Reconsider your ways. Because Christianity is the only way. Logically, I will say Christianity is the only way because correspondingly, Christianity is the only way that confirms the actual facts on the ground. What do I mean by actual facts? Corresponding actual fact. It corresponds with the actual facts on the ground. You can find the historical Jesus. You can find everywhere and everyone related to Jesus. The, the pilot, those, emperor, those guys that were involved in his death, you can find all those guys in history. So that's corresponding a uh, uh, theory according to theological studies to so it, it 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 coincide with the facts on the ground then christianity is also the only religion that's cohesive 
cohesively, it, it's, it, I would say it's, it's coherent. It, it is the only religion that is coherent because cohesively it holds a system together. I'm talking about, uh, you know, the nation of Islam or Islam in general is growing, not because many folks, they are getting many converts because that is why they marry a lot. That is another secret. <laughs> That's why they marry a lot. So you born into it, you become part of it. But in Christianity, no, Christianity is just growing. So it is only Christianity that correspondingly is, you know, you, you, can, you, you can find the actual fact. And it is coherently, you know, it's that it's cohesive because it is the only religion that you, has a foundation that has built this, 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 this body of Christ and continue to grow. And then it is only in Christianity that you, we, you can have a point of reference that you can go to and say, well, this is who I was before I became Christ, before I became a follower of Christ, before I became a disciple of Jesus Christ. This was my lifestyle, and it is my lifestyle now. You can find a point of reference. I want to leave that there. So you've had me. So how do you become a Christian? Becoming a Christian the way I did it according to the, to the Gospels. No, according to the, uh, yeah, according to the Gospel, according to the, the Judeo-Christian scriptures, you must first believe what the scripture says about Jesus Christ. You must believe that truly he's not only a son of God, but he's, he's God, his deity. Who make such emphatic declaration that the God we are looking, he said, I am the way, the life, and the, and the truth. Unless you find God through me, you can't. that person has to be God. <laughs> so according to Judeo-Christian scriptures, you have to believe that Jesus truly was here. God manifest in Jesus Christ went to that cross, you must believe and make that confession according to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. You must believe in your heart. You must make a confession with your mouth. And, and why do you do that? Because you must also acknowledge that there is sin. There is, there is sin in the world and you were born into it. That is where Romans chapter 3, verse 23 is coming from that we all sin and fall short because that was in Adam. If you are a human, then you, your progenitor is Adam. It is only increased. So how do, you, how do you make this transition? Yes, you believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth. According to the Judeo-Christian scriptures, I, I, I guess Romans chapter 10 verse 13 says, if you call on him, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is how you made the transition. It doesn't matter whether you're a Muslim, a Buddhist, Hindu, atheist, agnostic, evolutionist. It, it doesn't matter. You make that confession, you believe, and you, you, you do that. You become a Christian. I'm not going to ask you to do anything. I've given you the ability to do that. You can do that whether at your own sitting, ask the Holy Spirit, ask God in the person of Jesus Christ. That I heard this preacher talk about this today. If truly you are out there, then I want to receive you into my life. And if you do that sincerely, you become born again. I did that many years ago, and it has changed my life. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely. His mighty power and His grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings and His glory on His face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place.
God bless you and keep you. God makes his face shine upon you. God make that countenance of his glory overshadow you. May the favor of God pursue and overtake you this week and for the rest of the month. May God be all that you need and become all that he wanted to become according to his word. May he be, glorif may he be glorified and be magnified in your life. In Jesus' much less name, I ask in the perfect will of God. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, we're going to close from here. I want to see you by the grace of God tonight from four to from three to four in prayer. God richly bless you. Bye-bye now.